so it's a challenge. It's a lot of uh, sacrifice for them to join us. I have someone speaking to us from the US. The time is around 2 a.m. there now. I have uh, someone speaking from Australia. I think it's evening time. Someone is speaking from Malaysia. It's afternoon. So everyone is uh, on different timelines and on different programs. But they are making this effort to join us this afternoon. Uh, we have uh, one of the speakers who is unable to make it today because right now he's about to start an exam. So he would have loved to be here, but he couldn't make it because of his exam. So uh, maybe another time, maybe next webinar, we'll have him speaking to us. So we have uh, three guests who will be speaking to us and addressing some of the questions that we're always getting asked. I still remember that last uh, webinar, I still got many of those questions. But you know, in our effort to continue to support the dreams of all of our many clients, we try to seek out useful information that can help you in, in your journey to fulfillment. And that's why we're here this afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to share briefly what the program is going to look like. Then. what uh, the program is going to look like. That's, uh, I think uh, this is still showing just a minute. Let me scroll to that. Okay. So we are there. This is our uh, outline for the program this afternoon. So I'm just going to, I think I've already started the introduction if I've not uh, completed it. So, and then I'm going to just make a few announcements. Then we'll go straight on to the student testimonies from USA, Malaysia, and Australia. They'll be talking about scholarships, other types of funding that people can access, uh, work and study options, and self-employment options. Uh, then, uh, I'm just going to round up by talking about the hours admission process briefly for those who may have questions on that and then uh, we will from there move on to other things for the day. I know you all have different programs for the day so. So who we are, I think uh, I want to assume that everyone on the call knows who Arrow is. So we are your international education partners we are supporters of your study abroad dreams and that's uh, that's just the uh, thing what we've been doing and that's what is bringing us together here again today um, this is what we do uh, just to put it concisely of course we do more than that but we provide guidance and counseling for our students uh, personalized support in the sense that we know that everyone has a different case so we try to uh, personalize it for you we try to look at your specific case and advice based on that, guide you based on that. And then we do academic counseling and career counseling. The difference being that, okay, before you go in, what program should you be focusing on based on your personal situation or the country of study that you want to go into? How can you factor that into your future career so that you don't make a mistake? And then we also do research consulting for uh, students who are interested in pursuing either a research masters or PhD research. We do research consulting, we provide admission processing, research support, and then uh, fund security is added there for you to know that you have nothing to fear. Because uh, I think I've had several cases where students will tell me, so how can I be sure that you are for real? That <laughs> because people have gone through so much in this uh, field and so the only thing I can tell you is if you're looking for 100% security okay you have it here and then we also go beyond admission for all our students that's uh, one of the things that you know uh, differentiate us from other uh, study abroad uh, service providers we don't just help you process visa and maybe get admission we support you through the entire process we support you through your travel plans through your travel to even when you land in your uh, 
study destination. We have also supported our students who have had problems. After they have registered and started their program, they got into trouble and we needed to, they needed support, we do that. So our support for our students is right from the moment you are thinking about traveling until, I think forever, we always call our students our family members because at the end of the day, that's what they become. And then, uh, we, well, all of those goes into what I'll call the exceptional value added services that we provide. And finally, we provide support for minors because for many African countries, we have students who come in who are less than 18. So for such students, we try to be there for them because their parents couldn't be, I mean, they are thousands of kilometers away. So we try to be there for them and we have that network across the world and we leverage that for whichever country our students are going into. Okay, uh, we move on to the next slide. So today on the webinar, uh, we are going to be having uh, a sharing time with three uh, individuals. Uh, Solomon is the one at the top there, he's already on the call. You might see him on the call. He is speaking to us from Australia and he was a former student in Malaysia. He did his master's degree in Malaysia and now he is in Australia for his PhD program. And then we have Priscilla, who is also an undergraduate student, from, student the from the U.S. So she's, so going, to be she's going to be from the U.S. From the US. And then we have uh, Rachel Ifeo Lua. She's speaking to us from Malaysia. She's a PhD scholar. And uh, she is uh, also what I would call an entrepreneur. So she's going to be speaking to us about self-employment as a student how you can leverage self-employment to support yourself because that's what she's doing and she's going to be sharing her experience with us. So I'm Dr. Bossadi Edwards, always your host on this program and we're going to still be together for this session. Okay, a uh, brief announcement. Um, we, I think I announced that during the last seminar as well. In June this year, we're going to be having a special session of uh, education fair in Nigeria. We're going to be coming with several universities to Abuja and Lagos. And uh, Abuja is going to be on the 15th of June and Lagos on the 17th of June. So if you are anywhere around there and you want to be part of the webinar, uh, sorry, of the Edu Fair, please uh, register and join us at the fair. We will have a lot of opportunities because one, you are going to be able to meet the universities one-on-one. -on -one. You are going to be able to discuss with them, ask all the questions that you've been wanting to ask. And apart from that, we, are, we have already discussed with uh, the universities that are coming to be ready to give you on-the-spot admission letters. So for those uh, who are about to write uh, their WAEC or who just wrote their WAEC and are waiting for results, you can use this opportunity to get your offer letter against December, I'm sorry, September intake. So you can you know, take advantage of that. Uh, they are going to be there and I will play that later on. And then uh, more announcements here about, okay, I've just talked about that program right now. We are covering bachelor's, master's and PhD as well as professional courses. So if you are there and you are saying, oh, I'm not interested in any one of the degree programs, then maybe you want to develop yourself professionally, you're also covered. And then during the next webinar, we're going to be having sharing times with professors and professionals from different fields. I, I promised us that last year, but we were unable to because of uh, a number of factors that prevented that from happening. But we're going back to that now. And I'll say for parents on the call, please encourage your children to be part of this. A lot of times uh, students just make decisions based on what they think is good or maybe based on names. You know, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be this and that because they believe that it's prestigious. But we are living in a world that is totally different from the days of our parents. Uh, getting a prestigious title does not guarantee anything. You want to be able to study and after your study, be able to get employment. That's the focus. So we're going to be having people from different fields speaking to us about different professions. 
so that uh, our students can learn to make informed decisions about their study abroad. And then we're going to also going to be bringing more speakers who will speak on fundings and scholarships. And we are going to, we are already making more effort on supporting our students with uh, scholarship information. And uh, you're going to be receiving some links shared with you just now uh, on the, uh, I think in the chat box, you'll get the links for some of the scholarships that uh, we already created for you. They are, met, they are all open at the moment. So if you are qualified, you can always uh, apply. Um, parent testimonials will also be part of the things that we are going to be uh, working through when during the next uh, set of webinars that we're going to be having. We'll bring parents that we have worked with, parents of our students to talk to you so that as a parent, if you want to hear from someone like you, they are going to be able to speak to you and you can they can share with you how we have worked together with them so that your mind can be at peace that you are in the right uh, hands. And then uh, more uh, announcements there. Intakes that are currently open, September 2023, uh, January 2024, April and May and September 2024. Uh, it might surprise you that some universities are already filled up for 2024. So if you want to go to so, such a university right now, you will only be able to apply for 2025. So what that means for you is, if you want to study abroad, start early. Don't wait until you have everything. Start on time so that if, even if you, let's say you want to go to a university, uh, usually Canadian universities are like this. Many of the top universities there. So let's say you want to go to one of those universities and the seat is already filled up for September 2024. It means that the only thing that is open right now is January 2025. And if you don't apply now, you will still miss that. So start early, start now. Even if you get an offer and you are not completely ready to go, maybe you still need a little more time to prepare, you can always make a deferment and secure that seat against when you will be ready. And so on the right hand uh, side of my screen, you'll see uh, open scholarships and postdocs. So for those who have been asking me about postdoctoral fellowships, yes, they are there. NTU Singapore Presidential Postdoc Fellowship is there. And then uh, you have uh, the HFSP program in, uh, I think that's uh, Switzerland or so. And then you have the Zurich uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship as well. There is a Youth Leader UNFPA scholarship there for Ghanaian students. So if we have anyone from Ghana on the call, that's a scholarship that you can explore. It's fully funded, but it's about to close. I mean, application is about to close on 30th of this month. So you need to be fast. The MSCA postdoctoral fellowship is also there for uh, anyone working in the field of uh, digital uh, technology or any interdisciplinary field. What that means is whichever field you are in, as long as you can you know, link it up with technology in one way or the other, you are free to apply for this scholarship. Okay, so now we get to where we are going, sharing time with uh, our scholars from around the world. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see their faces and I'm going to pin them. So we're going to start with Priscilla, who is speaking from the United States because of the time. It's 2.15 a.m. there and she has had to wake up to speak to us. So we would like to take her first so that we can release her to go and sleep. So. Hello and welcome to the webinar and thank you for joining us. Uh, can you please uh, go ahead and tell us uh, where you are, what you are studying and where you are studying and then uh, please try to address some of the questions. So what I've done is to, to try to give them uh, information ahead about the questions that people have been asking about scholarships, about funding, so that they can prepare to address those questions. So uh, that's where we are just going to go now. And then we'll take uh, Priscilla. So please go ahead, introduce yourself. I'll be coming in and asking uh, a few more questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm currently in the United States of America in, a, in an institution in Kentucky. And yeah, 
My name is my name is Priscilla, by the way. My name is Priscilla. But that's I don't already know. Yeah, what's your major? Tell us about your major and why that major and what led you there and so I'm in the pre-med track. I'm in the pre-medicine track in my university, and I'm currently a mathematics major. And I'm pers uh, pursuing chem biology and chemistry minors to satisfy the requirements for my pre-med courses. So that that was the option I chose. Uh, so I could either be a mathematics or a biology major in my university, and I chose mathematics. Okay. So um, I'm asking all those questions for us on the call so that. Uh, you have an idea of the requirements when you are thinking about courses because um, education systems across the world differs. So this is the system in the United States. You have a major, you have a minor, and you have to choose those based on the direction that you are going. So she's in a pre-med program. And so you have the option of going for a biology major or a mathematics major, and she has chosen mathematics major. Why did you choose mathematics major? Why not biology? Well, I I just had to check what exactly I needed because the best, okay, I am someone who really loves mathematics and going through the course requirements in biology versus mathematics, I realized that there are more um, opportunities for me when I take a math, uh, mathematics major because um, the, the biology major is really rigorous and with a lot of courses and I might not be able to take as many uh, as many courses in other aspects like biology, uh, maths and chemistry. But with the mathematics major, I could do a lot more. So that's why I chose the mathematics major. Okay, thank you. Uh, so did you have uh, entry any entry scholarship what is it worth? And, um, yeah. So international students here have what we call an international student discount. And that's, it basically houses the fees um, that we're supposed to pay as long as we, we live on campus. Uh, that's basically the only requirement there is for the international student discount. And that's what I have. Okay, thank you. So that's a 50% discount both on tuition and living expenses, so to say. So it basically divides your total cost into two. The only requirement is you must live on the campus. That means you can't cook, you have to eat from the university cafe or the hostel cafe or something like that. Okay, so um, are you currently working? How long did it take for you to find your first job? How much does it pay? And is he able to cover your tuition or living expenses? Um, first, I'd like to establish that uh, international students can only walk on campus and have a maximum uh, uh, number of hours a week that we can work with, which is 20 hours. And I currently work two jobs on campus. One of them is at a fast food restaurant uh, waiting, and the other one is as a tutor on campus for fellow students. And um, my fast food job, I really love it because it's something other than academics that I do. And it's a way to get out and like de-stress and recharge for the week, basically. But um, the good thing about working on campus is that it's just like five to 10 minutes walk from uh, your dormitory to wherever it is. And my other job as a tutor, uh, it pays better than the fast food job. The fast food job is basically a uh, minimum wage. And then the uh, the tutor job is... How much is minimum wage, please? So minimum wage is like $7.25 per hour without taxes. And uh, yeah, that's that's the, uh, the pay for the job in the fast food restaurant. And... Um, as a tutor, I get like $9 per hour, which is much higher. And based on comparing, like we can only, since we can only do 20 hours per week, uh, we can't really uh, cover our tuition. But if you find a good scholarship in my school, you, you would do a lot better with that. But as international students, most of what we need is provided on campus. Like we get two hundred dollars per week uh, per semester to spend on campus, and so 
Um, so most of what we need to pay for are like our daily expense, our daily uh, needs, like shampoo or body wash or anything of that sort. And so we don't really spend as much because most of what we need is already provided for us, like food and all that stuff. But um, covering tuition, if you're trying to work on campus to cover tuition, you can try other jobs. There are other jobs that pay better because um, if you try to work a minimum wage job here, it's very hard to get like full 20 hours per week in your initial stages because you sort of need to prove yourself for the first like semester or two, prove yourself that you you are actually serious about the job before they give you more hours. And like I said, you can't exceed 20 hours or else you just won't get paid at all. And um, yeah, that's about it because- How about uh, the tuition job? Uh, how do you get that? So um, there, there are spots, so our school provides free tutoring for anyone who needs it. However, the students themselves are the tutors. So if you get, so if you want to tutor in a, in a course this sem next semester, you have to get an A or B in that course uh, during your during your own time studying that course. So I had to um, wait one semester and take like most of the subjects that I could so that I can, tu I can tutor it for the next semester. So that's how it works. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, so what other types of jobs are available for international students? Are there any roles that are particularly uh, for international students? So um, there are a few other jobs. We Okay, so those city the citizens in this country, they have something called work study where they can do um, up to 40 hours per week. But for international students, we have what is called worksheet, where we can only do 20 hours per week, like I mentioned earlier. And the, the, those are the restrictions, 20 hours per week. And the other jobs that are available, they might not be obvious, like in your first few weeks or months at the school, because you have to like expand your communication and reach out to people, because it was tough myself to get a job because most of the spots were filled. Like I said, we can only work on campus. That means every international student is competing for the same available jobs that are on campus. So um, there are a few other jobs, but it would take like much more work to be able to access them. Yeah. So, so um, how long did it take you from resumption uh, to finding your first job? It took me about two months and I had to like continuously go back and forth. Yeah. Is that the same uh, experience for all international students or was it because you didn't have enough information at the initial stage? It's partly because I didn't have enough information at, uh, at the beginning because uh, we were only told so much and you had to do mainly your own research. But also um, most international students, because we are too busy uh, getting prepared for, for getting there, that we don't think about when we actually reach them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so what would be your advice to uh, international students who are just coming in uh, or who are about to come in so that they don't face the same issues that you faced? How can they navigate things? You definitely want to reach out. So people like um, alumni that are from the school, uh, international alumni, because they'll help you better. I'll say you reach out and talk to people around you, smile at people around you because you never know if that's the person that will give you your next job. Step out, make more connections and everything. And uh, start early actually, because may, uh, some people had already like, applied for the jobs even before the semester started. And so those job positions were already full before the new, the new freshmen got on campus. So um, reach out early, talk to people, don't don't feel like you're bothering anyone because those people that are on campus to help you, they're there to help you, and they're that's their job. They're free, so reach out and talk to people. Uh, are there any um, scholarships or I mean merit scholarship that international students can take advantage of, or and other types of scholarships? There are sports scholarships that are basically full scholarships. 
So if you play a sport and uh, and you have enough qualifications, they will usually ask for, say, awards or videos of uh, of your participation in the sporting events. Then um, you can apply, and then the coaches will decide whether you're fit to be on the team. And if you qualify, then you get a full scholarship, basically. And there was also one that they started last last semester, which is for uh, international freshmen only entry, and it also co- covers your full tuition for four years. So if What's you the get a hand for that. Um, you have to show financial need for that one and also um, apply very early. I, I'm i not too sure if they're still going to continue with it because um, they only started it last semester. So that's why a lot of people didn't know about it, which is another reason why we need to reach out and talk to people around us. So, yeah. Yeah, but then if it's an entry scholarship, if there's no way someone who is not already in the system can reach out to anyone in the system. Uh, not for that one, not for that one. But for the sporting scholarship, if you feel like you're ready after after your first year, then you can always go for it. Okay, so you still have to be in the system already before you can apply for the sports scholarship? Uh, for the sports scholarship, you can either do it as an entry scholarship or while you're, while you're in the system already. Uh, so let's see if we still have any other question. Um, can I cover this? Okay, so uh, I'm just going to leave the floor open now and see if anyone on the call has any question for Priscilla, please. Um, you can ask now. I think uh, she'll be able to take like two questions so that uh, she can go to bed. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. My name, is, my name is Adamu, and uh, thank you, Priscilla, for the presentation. So, what are the uh, admission requirements, as in for postgraduate study in your institution? For postgraduate studies, I'm not too sure about that one, but um, they. I'm not too sure of postgraduates. I'm sorry. Okay, let me let me address that. Uh, because she's an undergraduate student, yeah. um, uh, I will be in a better position to provide you information about postgraduate admission. So maybe we can talk immediately after the program. But normally, the standard uh, requirement is still, uh, depending on the, the cost of study, uh, if the university has the course. So I think that would be the first thing that we need to establish. Let's know which course you're looking at and then we can advise based on that. And whether you want to go in for a full research or taught program, those are all factors that we need to discuss. So uh, we can talk about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Any other question? So I want to assume that uh, we have the information. So if at any time you have any question on uh, the presentation she has made, which uh, let me summarize that. Um, the admission, okay, the admission process was handled by Aros, and so uh, including the visa processing as well, as well as the travel and everything, resumption, settling down and all that. So um, that is uh, something, academic requirement for pre-med. Okay, um, do you want to answer that? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, to get in, we, we actually get in using um, either your SAT or the ACT, so either one works, and also your uh, high school, your high school um, transcript. You need all, three, uh, all two of those, so you can either choose between SAT and ACT. And also, um, when you get in, you'll be given a biology major, so you can always change that to whatever you want. But to write your, so before you go into medical school, you have to write MCATs. And so before you can do the MCATs, obviously you need the prerequisites to know, like for the courses that will be um, asked, for questions that will be asked in the MCAT. So whatever major you